Melanie's the best. She's she's a good girl. She's a hoot. What are you most looking forward to people seeing in the third season? What I'm looking forward to them seeing, I, I watch the dailies every morning, and that's my thing, and I purposely tell Emily, do not send me the scripts. You know, I don't I want to you know, see that, but it's kind of like putting a puzzle together, and Emily, this season, there is a point A to point B in season three, but that and the storyline, that's great, and that's the way it should be, it's a strong, compelling storyline. But I think what everyone's going to find out with season three, without me giving anything away, is what she's woven in between them. Every reoccurring character, every guest star in the ensemble cast that we have, everybody in this is going to get a moment to shine. It may be five, ten seconds, it may be five minutes and a, and a lot of dollars, but she has made sure that everybody that's on that show this year is going to get to shine. And I mean, in a way that's going to make the whole storyline compelling. This is a very complicated cerebral season. I mean, all the fun's there, don't get me wrong. But Emily this year and the writers, the best way I can think of to describe it, she has reached in, grabbed, she's going to grab those viewers' heart, pull it out. She's not going to she's going to squeeze it a little bit. And then she's going to jam it back in there. If you thought last year with the pregnancy, with the house being born, things like that, were emotional, it doesn't even compare. The well that everybody gets thrown into, the viewers are getting thrown in that well this year. I'm not kidding. You're either gonna uh, you're either gonna pee your pants laughing, or you're gonna fill a bucket up with some tears. This year. I mean, she for a small Canadian show and, and the cult following that has this set and the other, she is really gonna play um, some tic tac toe with the emotions this year. And I am really looking forward to for everybody to see what I've gotten to see in small bits with uh, the script so far, with uh, the dailies. So, it's two surprises. So, since the comic book always had a, like a larger scope of monsters, yeah. uh, were you happy to get the, those dailies and see vampires finally? And I like the way the vampires were treated. Not Emily and the writers put a different twist on it. I mean, that's classic Euro trash vampires. <laughs> A stripper bus, and the best part was Nedley, Greg Lawson, with his okay. scarf, the ascot, being so continental, so chic, you know, that, and that was just great stacking, you know, that was some great stuff. But no, getting to see that, and I would love to see more. That's why I'm hoping the longer we're on, the bigger the budget might get, and then we can just have fun. I mean, that's part of Tim and I writing the book, is he's spoiled now. I mean, he's, he'll go back to Emily, he goes, and Mr. Smith and I, we just we just wrote this part. We got these big egg monsters, and Emily's going, we can't can't afford those, Timmy. Oh, we need we need the big egg monsters, you know, and just going on. So hopefully we'll get to see that stuff. And I mean, we've got the new graphic novel that Tim and I are working on. Who do you see who's in that? Wait, I'm serious. We I'm spoiling that boy. I'm spoiling. <laughs> Can you see some of the creatures that are showing up in that? In the graphic novel, yes. Uh, at least this is not giving anything away, but uh, it's called Bad Day at Black Rock. And Black Rock is the Black Badge prison for all the paranormals. And you're going to meet uh, a remake of Bobo Del Rey's younger brother, Mars. Mars Del Rey. And if I could, if I could compare Mars to no Bobo, and if I could compare Mars to give you an idea, do you, you remember the TV show Lost? You know, this character that Josh Holloway played, Sawyer. This is similar. He is similar. He's a charmer. He sees himself as a criminal businessman. He and Bobo are different. And this is going to parallel the relationship of Winona and Waverly. Now you get to see it on the dark side with Bobo and Mars Del Rey. So Tim and I are really excited to explore that. We're going to explore more of where we left off in season zero, where you find out the uh, paranormal Bible has been discovered by Winona. And she was looking through it at the end of the book, and she ripped out the page. And this is this is a book that's thousands of years old from Atlantis, and she's in it. So we're going to explore a little of that. Uh, 
luckily enough with the comic book, I have an extremely unlimited budget. So we're able to do things that on television will take 10, 15 years. So I'm trying to give Emily enough stuff that she can play with. And I'm, again, taking from her and playing with that in the book. And it's, Valdez is going to have, the character Valdez is going to be a very surprising picture in Bad Day Black Hawk that you never know. You just never know. That's that's a character that I created that next to Winona is near and dear to my heart. And hopefully everyone's going to find out. How much are you involved in the day-to-day -day of the, the show? Of the show? Actually, zero. Okay. Um, and that works out really well. When, we, when I first got Emily's pitch, the Bible, the manual, what she wanted to do with Wine on Earth, it's a total flip-flop from what I, I've always written Wine on Earth. Time, at the age of 45, she turned it to 27. Everything she turned, I said, this is great. And even something so, so small as cosmetic as blonde hair, yeah. that's going to be in a major storyline. Guys, thank you very much.